Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel, I'm Hashem Ali Khan. In this video, last three problems I'm going to explain on problems on analysis, uh, problems on time value, time value of money. So already 17 problems I've completed in this last video, 18, 19, 20. Three more problems I'm going to explain. So the problems are based on the theoretical concept of time value of money. Already I have uploaded the theory video on time value of money. So if you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject financial management new, select the video of time value of money, be perfect about the concept of why we calculate time value of money. It's a very important concept from the point of view of finance manager. Because whatever financial decisions he take regarding capital budgeting decision or investment decision or uh, financing decision, dividend decision, all these decisions are affected by time value of money. So in this time value of money, we have discounting technique as well as compounding technique. Finding out the future value, we use compounding technique and finding out the present value, we use discounting technique. Now before starting the 18th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep the problem ready. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board then I will explain. Come on, see the 18th problem. XYZ bank pays 12% and compounds interest quarterly. That means bank is paying the interest on their deposits at 12% per annum. But interest is credited quarterly, every quarter. Quarter consists of three months. So after every three months, interest is calculated and compounded. If 1000 rupees are deposited initially, how much shall it grow at the end of five years? So we have to find out what is the compound value of this deposit of 1000 after a period of five years. Already so many problems we have done in uh, making, in finding out the compound value. So that is the formula. So present value of deposit 1000, rate of interest 12% per annum, but interest is created quarterly. Number of years five. Compound value after five years will be CV, compound value is equal to PO. Present value 1000. 1 plus R. Annual rate of interest is 12%, 0.12. But quarterly, how many quarters? Four quarters are there in one year. So 0 0.12 divided by 4, you will get 3%. 12 divided by 3, 12 divided by 4, four quarters. It comes to 3% quarterly. So, but uh, N is equal to number of years. In five years, how many times the interest will be calculated? So 5 into 4, 20 times. So 0.12 divided by 4, 0 0.03. 0 1.03 to the power of 20. If you refer the compound value table. So I expect my viewers, you already have the compound value table and present value table. The PDF of these two tables I have already given in the link. So always keep ready the table value. So compound value of 3% for 20 years. For 3% 20 years, it comes to 1.806. So you can see here 1.806. So multiply 1.806 into 1000, 1806 rupees. This is the compound value after 5 years. If you deposit 1000 right now. Now, 19th problem. See the 19th one. Mr. X is borrowing 50,000 to buy a low income group house. If he pays equal installments for 25 years and 4% interest on outstanding balance, what is the amount of installment? What shall be the amount of installment if quarterly payments are required to be made? So two different questions. If annual installments are paid, what is the annual installment every year? If quarterly installments are paid, what is the quarterly amount to be paid? For how many years? 25 years. Rate of interest, 4%. So present value of the loan is 50,000. So amount borrowed today 50,000. Number of years 25. Here rate of interest 4%. 0 .0. Annual amount of installment. 
because present value there is a formula for present value present value is equal to constant annual cash outflow because installment we have to pay constant every year the constant annual cash outflow into PV of annuity factor because installment is same every year for 25 years so PV of annuity factor 4% 25 years then present value of the loan is 50,000 annual cash outflow into PV of annuity factor 4% 25 years so if you take the table PV of annuity table in annuity table 4% 25 years so you can see here 14.094 Sorry, 15 point, not 14, 15 point so 622, 4% for 25 years, 15.622. So now annual, constant annual cash outflow is equal to 50,000 divided by 15.622, 3200.61. This is the annual installment to be paid for 25 years for repayment of the loan of 50,000. If quarterly, if interest is compounded quarterly, then R is equal to 0 0.04 divided by 4, 1%. So annual 1%, quarterly it comes to, uh, annual it is 4%. So quarterly it comes to 1%, 0 0.04 divided by 4, 0.01. N is equal to number of compounding periods. So actually 25 years, but every year 4 quarters installment has to be paid. So 4 into 25 is 100. Now again we substitute the values, present value 50,000, constant cash outflow quarterly into PV of annuity factor 1% 1 for 100 periods. So 50,000 is equal to constant cash outflow into PV of annuity factor 1% 1 100 times 78.394. Now divide 50,000 divided by 78.394 you get 637.8. This is the quarterly installment payable every quarter for 25 years. That's it. Now, last and final problem that is problem number 20. Sham borrows 80,000 for a musical system at a monthly interest of 1.25%. The loan is to be paid in 12 equal monthly installment payable at the end of each month. Prepare the loan amortization schedule. 80,000 loan is being taken and 12 monthly installments have to be paid at the rate of 1.25%. So first of all, we calculate what is the monthly installment, then we can make the schedule of amortization of the loan. So monthly installment is obtained by solving the equation. Uh, 80,000 is equal to A into PV of annuity factor 1.25% 12, 12 months. So present value of the loan is 80,000. A, A is the monthly installment we have to pay that we have to find out into PV of annuity factor we can't refer the table because it is given in fraction 1.25 percent if it is given a whole number then we would have uh, consulted the table we can get easily the table value but here table value manually we have to find out so how 1 plus r to the power of 12 because 12 months we have minus 1 divided by r into 1 plus r to the power of 12. By substituting in this formula, we can be able to find out the monthly installment. r is nothing but rate of interest 1.25%. So 1.25 divided by 100, you will get 1, uh, 0 0.0125. 0 0.0125 is the r value, right? 0 0.0125 r value. So minus 1, 1 plus r, so 1 plus 0 0.0125, 1.0125 to the power of 12, minus 1, divided by r is 0 0.0125 into 1 plus r, so 1.0125 to the power of 12. So if you solve 1.0125 uh, 1, 1 to the power of 12, you will get 1.16075, minus 1, divided by, you will get 11.0786. Now finally, A is equal to 80,000 divided by 11.0786, 7,221. This is the monthly installment payable for 12 months, right? Monthly installment. Now it is asking you to make the schedule, amortization schedule, monthly. How much is the interest? How much is the principal repayment?
Now month beginning amount, monthly installment, interest payment, principal payment, then remaining amount. This table we require for amortization. First, 80,000 is the beginning amount. On this monthly installment, every month 7,221. Every month, 12 months. Already we have calculated. Now interest payment. What is the rate of interest? 1.25% on the principal amount. So principal amount is 80,000. 80,000 into 1.25%. You will get 1,000. So out of 7,221 installment, 1,000 is the interest. So subtract interest 1,000. 6,221 is the principal repayment. Now end of the month, what is the balance? of loan 80,000 is the beginning out of 80,000 6,221 principal amount repay so deduct 80,000 minus 6,221 we will get 73,779 this is the principal amount at the end of first month now this will be the beginning second month beginning balance 73,779 the ending of first month will become opening of the second month now annual installment 7,221. Now calculate 1.25% 1 of 73,779. You'll get 922.2. So in this installment, 922.2 is the interest. Deduct the interest, you'll get 6,298.8 is the principal repayment. Principal repayment. Beginning of the year, beginning of the month, principal amount was 73,779. From 73,779 minus the interest, minus the principal amount, 6,298.8, <coughs> you will get 67,480.2. This is the principal amount outstanding at the end of second month. This will become beginning, opening for the third month. Third month, the same amount. Now on this 1.25%, 67,480.2 into 1.25%, we will get 843.5. So from the total installment, deduct the interest, 7,221 minus 843.5, you will get 6,377.5. This is the principal repayment. Now subtract. 67,480.2 minus 6,377.5, you will get 61,102.7. This is the principal at the end of third month. This will become opening for the fourth month. Like this, you have to continue. Calculating the interest principal amount at the beginning at the end like this it goes on up to 11 months in the last month We will take the balancing figure because rounding of error will come so beginning of the 12th month is 7127 how much amount is paid installment 7221 Simply find out the difference between the principal amount and the interest don't calculate 1.25% Small rounding of error you will get if you calculate 1.25%. So 7,221 minus 7,127.1. The amount of interest is 93.9. This is the interest of the last month. It is a balancing figure. Now subtract 7,221 minus 93.9. You will get 7,127.1. That is a principal repayment. No balance. Beginning of the month 7,127.1. Principal amount paid 7,127.1. So no closing balance at the end of 12th month. So this is the end of the 20 problems I have selected for time value of money. So this marks the end of the unit that is finance function, unit number one, where few, few videos I have completed on theory and three, four videos I have completed on problems on time value of money. So I have uploaded all the problems videos also that is regarding the capital budgeting, regarding uh, cost of capital, capital structure, leverage, then cash management, inventory management, receivable management, working capital management, dividend policies, co corporate restructuring. All these videos you can find in my playlist. In the playlist, select the subject financial management, you, you will get all the chapters all the chapters of financial management and these videos are very very useful for bba mba mcom and ca cma cs for all these courses these videos are very very helpful 
So inshallah we'll take up any other subject, other subject in the next video.